welcome. Sit back, relax, and check out tonight's episode of Whip, Sip, Crom Sip, Crom Sip. It's essentially a erotic tale of a man who loses control to a woman who has no problem taking all of what she deserves. No matter who she has to go through to get it. So grown folks, buckle up. You ready? That's right. Well, felt like I was supposed to move, but found myself in hesitation still at the corner post to the left of the dance floor, sitting alone at a table exactly when she caught my eye. Coco skin that matched her arm and highlights in this short cut perfectly. Those baby almond eyes with the hazel gaze that flowed waves of hello. At least I thought so. Those same almond eyes spoke before her first little smirk. But now she saw me glancing hard, too. <laughs> well, not yet, literally. Come on, Jay. She's watching you. At that moment, she tilted her head to the side and held her little glass up a little. I hadn't even ordered my first round yet, so it was fair that I took that as an invite. But as I started walking towards our table, the bartender brushed against my shoulder from behind as he walked away, straight to her table. Damn, I thought the glance was for me. But I was wrong. It's cool, though. I'll just pop a squad at the table next to her and grab the bartender's attention since he's already there. At least it's not a total loss. Couldn't help but think and toss a little convo would be a nice change of pace from listening inside my head like most evenings with nothing but time to waste. And then a voice, and it seems like the whole room silenced. What's your name? My back was slightly to her when I heard it. So, I took it to be for somebody else again. I think a good three seconds passed before I glanced over, since I heard no response. I leaned her way to lock eyes to make sure it was meant for me, and said, It's Tally. That's different. Is that your first or last? It's my last. But either way, just call me Jay. Okay, Jay. And I know you can't be from around here. Thank you, Queen, I guess. You might be right. She laughed, and I liked it. Her tone was sweet, comforting, and one I could relax into, you know. Oh, you just called me queen, so now I know you're not from around here. She laughed. It was a laugh that made me smile. The ice was broken enough for me to ask. Mind if I share your table? She removed her little Aramis bag from the other chair, so that was enough for me. Had we done the most erotically sensual thing I'd felt in a long time? We talked and shared. I mean, time did its thing. It just flipped and did what it does. I can't say what it was, but it was different because she didn't ask normal questions nor give basic responses. I mean, each was different. Like, she didn't ask, what did I do for work? She asked, are your days happy enough to make you go to sleep satisfied? Or when I asked something like, are you seeing someone? She responded, the problem is no one really sees me. I dug listening to her. <laughs> but she had this cute little tiny mole and a chin that caught my eye each time she spoke. I had to have looked like I was watching those fool, soft, brown, moistened from time to time by the tip of her tongue lips. Hmm. Damn. I guess you can tell I was. She seemed slightly older and very mature and settled in what she deserved, like she was extra cautious of what she gave to the universe. A light from the door opened and shone in enough for me to glance at my watch by now. I can see by now it was close to 1 a.m. She nursed that glass of red the entire night, and the ice cubes left in my glass and melted. But I was so into her that the drink was the last thing on my mind. By this time, she noticed the attention I paid to my wrist and said with that cute little sexy voice, this, schoolboy got somewhere to be. And me? Yeah, nowhere but to the airport in the AM. She grabbed the same wrist that I was peeping at with one hand and adjusted the time on my watch with the other. She carefully adjusted it, ten minutes ahead, and said, Better for a man to be a little early than late. Damn, 
Who does that? Hard to describe, but her fingertips resting on my wrist felt hmm, electric. Yeah. Then it dawned on me that the conversation was so good, I'd never even asked her name. So, instead I asked if it would be okay to stay in touch. That I really enjoyed myself. I did too. Nice change of pace. And she didn't say anything else. Well, that didn't go as expected. Plus in my mind, she was way too fine to be alone. So I gave her a smile as I stood to put my coat on. Schoolboy, gotta get home. Where had I heard that before? Sounded so familiar. Like I said before, baby, early flight. While standing, she stood up too and gave me the warmest hug. And paused, then laid her head on my shoulder for a moment. Then adjusted my collar. Now, I can't explain why she did this. But she reached for my wrist again, looked at my watch, and tapped the crystal two times with a nail, and slid my sleeve back a little. And then pulled a pen from my coat pocket and began writing on my wrist as if she was writing. She said with that low, sexy tone, Where are you staying? I told her, I live in ATL. <laughs> she said, No, silly. I mean tonight. I imagine she saw the focus of my pupils go from left to right, from prey to predator in 0.5 because I saw her submissiveness come alive. I didn't take the moment to read what she'd written. Instead, I reached for her hand. She placed her fingertips against my lip and whispered to me, text me your room number and we'll see. And then I told her, hell, I can tell you right now. <laughs> Glanced to the window and saw that Russian cat standing outside in the car, waiting. Hands again, white gloves. Then she whispered a phrase I'd heard for the first time in my life from a woman. Don't worry, Jay. If I'm going to do you, I'm going to sneak and do you. Then she just released my hand. And sat back down to reach for our glass. So, as I exited the building, I was still a little dazed at the last statement. And what does it mean? I eased out and in as I slid into the back seat. I actually was satisfied with the feeling of that evening. The whole atmosphere still rang pleasantly in my ear. Gazing out the window as we pulled off with my arm up in the window sill on the passenger side. I noticed the writing, pulled back my sleeve a little, saw her number was neatly written, and above it perfectly was the word at my first glance, paradise. Well, well, well. <laughs> Thank you for checking out Whip Setup. Chronicles. Be sure to stay tuned. We just continue to twist down hotter and wetter and deeper with each episode. You never know what's next. But I promise that wherever we go, you're coming along with us. This is the series where you determine what happens. So until next round, good night.